Welcome to Kamloops Alliance 15 Days of Hope Devotional. I'm Diane. So I was recently watching an interview with Corey Close, who is the UCLA women's basketball coach, and she was reflecting on how COVID-19 has meant the loss of their whole season and March Madness and the potential of going to the NCAA championships. She was talking about living in the healthy tension of loss and disappointment and in choosing joy in the struggle. She went on to describe how she was helping her players address the current struggle, but also her coaching philosophy in general. She described a formula that she teaches her players. E plus R, event plus response equals outcome. In other words, no matter the event, the pieces that we can't control, what we can control is our response, the R factor, which directly impacts the outcome. I believe a similar formula is described in Romans 5, verses 3 to 5. Paul is describing trouble or suffering, and his prescribed response is patient endurance, the R factor. A really good question is, how do we develop patient endurance? Perhaps part of the how of developing patient endurance is beginning with the end in mind. Paul describes the optimal outcome of suffering as hope. I love how the Passion Translation says that hope is not a disappointing fantasy. So how do we get from trials to hope? Paul says it's through a refined character. I believe here is where the R factor that Coach Corey was talking about comes into play. It doesn't matter if the event you are processing is related to a global pandemic or a business downturn or a sports season or your personal health, whatever, there is loss and disappointment. Healthy emotional expression is important to process that. And what do you do with that sadness? Do you allow it to take over your mind with spiraling negativity? Another passage in Romans chapter 12 indicates that there is a discipline process that you must engage in order for your responses to not fall into a negative mindset. Paul calls it a renewed mind. So part of character development is the disciplining of the mind toward an orientation of joy. Right out the outset, verse three, Paul says we can have joyful confidence. The implication here is that it's not automatic, nor is it white knuckling it to put on a happy face. Paul is saying deep hope is a direct result of a refined character, which comes right out of grappling with struggle. So when I'm learning something, I find a visual really helps me, especially if it's colorful. So I made a vision of the formula. Here's Coach Corey's formula. Event plus response equals outcome. The event is what we can't control. Our response is what we can control. Here's Paul's formula. Event plus your mindset times your character, all undergirded by joy, equals hope. Same event. Your refined mind will be multiplied by your character. Your character is demonstrated by your words and your attitudes and your behavior. All that can be undergirded by an orientation of joy if you choose it. Then comes hope. This formula says that whatever is going on in your mind will be evident for everyone to see by your words and actions. That could be really great news or really bad news depending on what's going on in your head. Notice Paul doesn't say, just be joyful and you'll have hope. Nope, the formula for hope includes struggle and response. I admit, I wish this formula didn't include struggle and it sure would be easier if I didn't have to work so hard. But it's right here where the rubber meets the road. God is at work in my life and I can cooperate with him in the midst of my struggles and renew my mind and refine my character or I can receive my struggles as a negative disruption to my pursuit of my own happiness. The deal is, struggles are gonna come either way and my R factor, my response, will be life defining. Today, as you spend time in Romans 5, 3 to 5, consider how your patient endurance, your mindset, is multiplying your character. My prayer is that you are able to leverage a solid R factor in finding places of hope.